Good evening, everyone. Happy Monday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way and ask questions and hang out and uh, make something with me. Uh, so tonight, you guys, we are going to continue on the Splendid Sampler 2 Quilt Along. And we are going to start the Radio Silence block tonight. So this feller right here, it is a lot of piecing little half square triangles and some flying geese quilting units together. So we'll go over that. I think tonight it will pretty much be a cutting day. We will cut up all of the little baby pieces that will uh, turn into this really pretty block. So that is the plan for tonight, everyone. Uh, thanks again for joining. Um, I'm going to flip you around and we will get started on this block. Thanks again, you guys. All right, here we are for the night. Let's just get right to it. So Radio Silence is the block for the night. I've been feeling like I it's time to do more pieced blocks. So on Monday of, um, or on Friday of last week, we uh, did this guy up real quick. This was just a one evening block, which I just was not ex expecting at all. It looks more complicated than that, but this one was done in one night. Uh, this was Happy Days. I think it was on just like page 30 here. Let's just check. Yep, right there. So Happy Days on page 30. We did that on Friday. Uh, so you can check out that video on Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube. And tonight, Radio Silence. It's on page 27 by Anne Marie Cheney. So uh, it has all these little cute little stars, cute little half square triangles and flying geese units. Um, that's basically it, it looks like. So here's, this is a half square triangle. It's a square that's made up of two triangles, half square triangles, what that unit is called, and then a flying geese unit. So it's a rectangle with two triangles on either side. So it's like one big triangle and two little triangles. So all of those uh, tan gram together will be this really cute uh, star block here. A few extra squares and rectangles in there too. So all right, let's pick some colors. It looks like there's just three colors here really. So we got this really, this one's all about contrast it looks like. So a really bold uh, dark color contrasting this light color here. And then we just have a nice little medium color in there as well. So uh, for my quilt, I am doing all the blocks uh, I'm, I'm having a white background as much as I can on the blocks. So I think this light color, I'm just going to automatically make white. And let's see, let's grab the fabric. So I have just these pale colors to choose from. I don't have a really good dark bold color, at least not. Um, I'm only peppering in some of these bold colors like every five blocks or so. And this is not one of those blocks. So I am just going to grab... Let's see, what is the darkest color in here? And it's really, there really isn't one, is there? I mean, okay, that maybe. Let's let's keep going here. I thought I had kind of like a dark, kind of a muddy brown color. But maybe we could have maybe used that all up already. We're at the point of the quilt that, uh, <laughs> oh, here we go. This is what I was thinking. But we're at the point where we're starting to use up things. So that's, you know, that's pretty contrasty. Like if you squint, this is definitely, um, feels dark. This kind of isn't too bad either though. I kind of like all the swirls in this. I think the swirls make it feel a little special. I think I'm gonna go with the swirls. But now we need kind of a, uh, a little medium color there. So, I mean, I guess I'm going with these kind of tan colors. I don't have to, though. I could add a little pale yellow in here, too. What about this little flower thing? That'd be kind of cute. I think I want to go a little paler, though. What about this? We haven't used this in a long time. This is, um, it's, it's just that cute little check with a few cute little houses and a little doodads all over it. That might be good uh, for this medium color because it's just a rectangle, so you might actually get to see a few of those little guys. 
Oh, that's sweet. Okay, I like this. This is nice. So I'm going to go with this um, as the deal tonight. Pretty. Okay, I like it. A little muted kind of, uh, but it decorative and pretty and floral still. I like it. All right. Well, that was fast. That was easy enough. All right, let's get cracking. What is up next? Okay, so we have a cream print, a navy print, and a blue print. Okay, this is going to be the blue print. This is the navy print, and this is the cream print. So this is the trouble when you uh, change the colors of the design. A lot of times um, it's a little different. So sometimes when I have a lot of colors going on or if I feel like I may get confused, I will write what this actually means. So like, you know, navy print, I would probably write like swirls or something, you know? I would just write that right next to here. Um, you know, and same thing with these, I would just write like the check for the blue rectangles and white for cream. I would just write that next to there. But um, in this case, I think we'll we'll keep track of it all. So I'm not gonna do that this time, but don't feel bad about writing it down. Even like cut a little swatch out and tape it. Um, that's a good way to do it too. Um, but yeah, sometimes you gotta do it what, what makes it work. Oh, do you want me to read this, Jana? So Jana is wondering how this block got its name. So this is by Anne Marie uh, Cheney, Radio Silence. It's uh, my first years of quilting were done during baby's nap times. I sewed in welcome silence, accompanied only by baby monitor static. The white noise and hum of the sewing machine became therapeutic. The radio silence was synonymous with me time and symbolic of stress release stress relief. So that's, that's where the name comes from. Radio silence, uh, listening to the baby monitor. Okay. A cream print. That is our white. We need four squares that are two and a quarter inches each and 12 squares that are one and a half inch. So let's start with that, uh, two and a quarter. So let's see, we need four of them. So that's eight, eight, nine inches. So that's nine inches worth that we need. Oh, no problem, Jenna. Yeah, each of the blocks has a cute little story. Um, I'll, I'll start reading the stories when we work on stuff here. It's kind of nice. It's nice to know where they came from. All right, so I just need nine inches worth and, and every single angle here is definitely nine inches. Ooh, I got like some weird starch or I dripped something on this white. Weird. Okay. Um, let's see. Where should I cut this from? What's the shortest side? Maybe this is nine inches. This little jog. I can, I could just continue this jog. Let's give that a measure. It's not as easy as just cutting off the bolt. I gotta, oh yeah, that's perfect. Um, gotta kind of pick where we're going. Okay. And then I could probably cut the other one this way. We'll, we'll work on that one next. Let's one at a time. So this is going to be the two and a quarter inches. I believe that'll probably be for making a bunch of half square triangles. We will see. So I'm just going to give this a little press just to make it a little prettier. Okay. So I'm going to cut it out of this little area here. Okay. Back to the cutting board, a little rotating. All right, let's just hop up here. So I'm gonna just trim this edge just to make it just nice and clean and straight to get started. Get my rotary cutter out. There's a little nick up here, so I'll just cut up to that nick basically. But I'm just adding together. It's two and a quarter inches. So, and we need four of them. So two times four is eight inches and then a quarter times four is an additional inch. So nine inches. Um, if you're like me and need to know the math late at night, that's, that's the math. Okay. So I'm going to do the double ruler method of cutting right now, just because I don't Normally I would have to flip this around so I can put my straight edge against there or I'll, or I'd have to be ambidextrous and be able to cut left-handed, but uh, that scares me. <laughs> so we're going to just do the two ruler, which allows me to keep my fabric 
so I'm not messing with that and I just have the two rulers. So, all right, two and a quarter inch. So we're gonna measure, you know, what we need here. Two and a quarter. And then we're gonna just bump up the other ruler next to that. All right, then I'm gonna hold that down and we're just gonna remove that ruler and we got our two and a quarter inches there. I'm gonna just slowly cut. All right, about right there was our nine inches and you know what, I'm gonna just, since I know I'm gonna trim this, I'm just going to just continue my little nick mark that's in there. There we go. <laughs> All right, so here's our start. This is gonna be our uh, two and a quarter inches. And you know what? I think I'm gonna, since we need four of them, I'm gonna just fold this together. Put a little press there. And I'm gonna start out by just, um, I'm aligning it to an edge here and I'm gonna just trim those edges because those, those weird edges that I didn't cut with a ruler, those are not straight. And I'm gonna get my favorite ruler out here, hold on. Ugh, reach, there we go. I like this ruler for cutting smaller things. Oh, you use the two ruler all the time now, Gretchen. Yeah, it just, there's sometimes, sometimes it's easy enough to turn what you're working on, but oh man, sometimes that is just not easy when you have fabric everywhere and, uh, um, And especially if you have layered fabric, then just picking up and moving it, you're never gonna get those edges to match again. So um, being able to just move the rulers instead of the fabric is pretty handy sometimes. All right, there, I just trimmed that edge. In this case, I'm gonna just rotate my whole dang mat. We're not gonna do the double ruler there. Okay, so I need two, uh, two and a quarter pieces. Man, two and a quarter inches is smaller in real life than it is in my head. These are so little. Two and a quarter. Okay, there's a set of two squares and two and a quarter. Get it all lined up. Okay, two and a quarter. There we go, we just have barely any little bits left. Okay, yes, first one done. So uh, we had those double layered, so we have both of our, we have all four. We only need four, yep. Okay, yeah, four. So put those to the side for now, and now we need a strip, or we, we need, 12 squares, that's quite a bit. So 12 squares that are one and a half inches. So let's see, um, that would be 12 inches plus another six inches. So I need at least 18 inches. This is probably, oh no, that's only 15. Oh, that's a bummer. What about this way? There we go, that's our 18. So this was most likely cut from a fat quarter and those are typically, I believe like 18 inches by 21, 22 inches. So, all right, I'm gonna just give this a little press over here and I'm gonna cut one long strip. I'm actually gonna fold the fabric in half because it doesn't fit on my, doesn't fit on my uh, cutting mat that big. Too long of a cut. And we're gonna just cross cut into a bunch of tiny little, um, Tiny, tiny little squares, so it's not gonna matter that I've that I've folded it. It's just gonna make us make it easier for us. And then, then I can clean up this crazy edge that I got going on here as well. I got all sorts of nicks from other projects on here, other blocks. I can trim all those up real nice and start out with a nice fresh edge. So I think I probably will use the two ruler method here because I got some fabric dangling down there and, I, and I'm layered here. So I know if I, if I um, try and turn my fabric around or even turn my mat, then it's just gonna go everywhere. So, all right, let's, uh, let's trim all these off. I gotta make sure that I get all the nicks. Oh yeah, there's a little nick out there. Ooh, I'm gonna have to scooch it down a little bit more to take care of all these 
mix. Again, those are just from other blocks because we're not we're not cutting perfect strips, like tons of perfect strips. We're cutting tiny little pieces in just the amounts that we need for all these all these different blocks. So my fabric's all weird looking. Random cuts all over the place. Okay, so I'm just looking now. I think there was a nick out the top here. Oh, but I think I got it. Okay, I think we're good. All right, one and a half inches. So let's put this on. Let's double check. Yep, it's one and a half. Okay, one and a half. Now let's get that other ruler. Here we are. One and a half. Okay. These are gonna be even smaller squares. I think that is it then for the white fabric. Man, okay, fold that up. Don't need that anymore. That's always fun getting rid of the big chunk of fabric. Out of my way, I'm working in a small little space here. I can't have fabric everywhere. Okay, so now I'm going to, I think I'm gonna fold this up again. I gotta cut these, these edges are all fuzzy and everything. So I'm gonna cut those, but while I'm doing that, I'm gonna just fold it one more time and we'll try and get as many one and a half bits out of this as we can. We need three. One, two, oh my God, it's gonna be so close. Okay, we're in danger zone. This is gonna be like exactly the right size. So I'm gonna finger press this really well here. Ugh, and we're just gonna shave the edge off here. Because I think we have four layers here and uh, um, four layers and it's just barely enough. We need to get 12 out of here. Um, I do have a video on half rectangle triangles. That's not what we're gonna be doing tonight, I don't think, um, but we, we did half rectangle, wait, half rectangle triangles, yeah. I'm so used to saying half square, triangles that it's hard to say half rectangle triangles um we did half rectangle triangles for the isle of home quilt i'm going to use my other other one here um so that's that's what we did the half rectangle triangles for and that may be the only time i've done those <laughs> uh, i think we might have done them for maybe one or two blocks maybe like one block for the first splendid sampler quilt along, but we did we did a whole pile of them for um, the I Love Home quilt. And all those videos are up. Um, I'm hoping there's probably a title for the half rectangle triangle ones. All right, now I gotta get one and a half inches out of here. It doesn't matter that I'm not perfectly lined up on my mat, my mat, because um, I'm using my ruler's lines instead. Look, I just have to shave that tiny edge off. Okay, this was just enough fabric. Ah! And we got it, itty bitty. Okay, so now this should be 12. Let's just double check, there should be four in here. Yep, okay, so that's four. Four, four, okay, good. 12 of these little puppies and uh, we got four of these. So the white is done. This is all the white. Gosh, it's hardly anything, isn't it? Um, all right, next up, let's take a look at this again. Again, we're working on the radio silence block. Okay, the Navy, uh, uh, the Navy print. So in our case, that is the squirrely swirly print. All right, so there's a lot cut out of here. So let's take a look at it. All right, so four squares. So this would have been a case. So I have four squares that are two and a quarter by two and a quarter, and that was what the white was. Um, if I had my wits about me a little bit more, I would have layered this on top of the white and cut it out at the same time. Um, but I did not do that. So we're gonna cut it again now all by itself. Actually, what is this one? All right, no, that one's different, so we'll let it be. Four blue rectangles. Okay, so here's here's what I mean. So this next thing that we're gonna cut is one and a half inches by two and a half inches. Our last piece 
is one and a half inches by two and a half inches. So I'll be able to layer um, layer these two together to cut that. But let's let's go in order. So two and a quarter by two and a quarter, four of them. So again, that's that nine inches. So let's un let's unfold this and see what we got. Okay, nine inches here. I think this is probably the best cut we're gonna get. This is a bit more than nine inches, but that's okay. Nine, it is more like 12 inches, but I think this is where we'll get our two and a quarter. I think it's still our shortest. Ooh, unless this is nine inches. What, what do we got over here? That's cutting it a little close. Oops, going this side. Oh yeah, no, let's do that. Okay, this is a better area here where we're not wasting as much fabric. Oh, I missed that. What what's uh, what helped you, Shauna, when trimming down the uh, squares, the half square triangles? Because we will be getting to that eventually here, and I need as many tricks as I can get. All right, I'm gonna trim this edge. It's all full of fuzzles. And we'll do that double ruler method again. So I'm gonna get this ruler to start. Oh, this is the, your favorite fabric, Gretchen? Oh, fun. I had, uh, I think, two fat quarters of this and they're both hanging out here. I'm gonna just cut this with the, that nick. Yeah. I'm going to cut a little more in, then I'm wasting a little less fabric, I suppose. Getting picky now. Oh gosh, I moved the ruler all over the place. That's, I am not a fan of this, this ruler. I, it's, and it's not the ruler's fault, it's me, I just keep moving. But yeah, look, I just have such an odd angle. So let's try that again. Scooch a little, scooch a little bit more. Ah, much better. Okay. Still have fuzzles everywhere, don't I? All right, this was two and a quarter. All right. Oh, the block lock tool. Okay. I remember you guys talking about that. I have. I've seen it. It's like a square ruler with like a a middle out of it. I don't I don't quite get it yet. I'll have to put that on my like Amazon list or something because we're gonna be doing a lot of half square triangles coming up here with um with uh my all, all my leaders that I'm sewing into half square triangles. Like I remember I'm I'm sewing all these leaders. So um you know, maybe that would be helpful for cutting all these out and trimming them down. Cause I'm just kind of being pretty lazy at how I'm sewing them. So they're all gonna be, uh, they're all gonna need to be super duper trimmed. Um, I'll have to look into that. I will look, in that, look into that tonight. Two and a quarter. So a lot of you guys love them. Oh, a dumbbell. Yeah, okay, I've heard that before too. You know what, I do have some of those sort of near me. Tomorrow I'll maybe try and get... Oh, we might not be cutting tomorrow. Next time we cut, I'll get a, a wait and see, see how that goes. I have heard of that though, but I, I haven't done it. Okay, so I'm gonna just match up these ends and look, there's a lot of nicks out of it. So let's see, gosh, do we even have enough? One, two, three, four, Five. Oh, I don't know if we have enough with those nicks. I might just have to trim it and just have a little nick on the end of one of these. And hopefully it's not going to matter. Like if it's in a half square triangle or something, maybe I can fake it. Ugh, bummer. Okay. Or I could recut it, but I don't really want to do that. So instead of folding it, I'm going to just trim them um, one by one. So where'd my little square ruler go? Favorite ruler, where are you? Here. Hiding. Oh, you use double-sided tape. Oh, that's a good idea too. 
Yeah, I have these little rubber guys, these True Grips stickers, and I they work excellent, but after a while they just get, I think, a lot of fuzz on or they start to pull off, so you kind of need to replace them. Um, and I think that one ruler, I'm using that ruler a little bit more than I than I like. Um, I probably should just put new new grips on it, because like this one just doesn't move at all. I, I love it. Or I just need more on it, you know. I, I think what's happening is that there's just one, and I'm putting all my pressure on that, and then it ends up like a pivot point almost instead of a grip. Use the quilt in a day six and a half inch triangle square up ruler. Oh. Oh, you leave the half square triangles folded. Oh, and then you trim. Oh, oh, that's interesting. So you line up like your seam line and then trim it. Huh. That would kind of make things kind of easy. I'll have to look into that too. All right. One, all right, two and a quarter. We're going to be cutting these close. I will look into that too, buddy. Yep, because we're going to be trimming a lot of those. The one thing I like for half square triangles, for trimming those up for sure, is my ro rotating cutting mat. But maybe with, um, maybe with, uh, the um, some of these other rulers, maybe that's not as big of a thing to have. Do I only need four of these? Why was I thinking that I didn't have enough fabric? I have tons of fabric here. Oh, because I think I was thinking two and a half inches, but I'm cutting two and a quarter. Okay, that's why. So we had plenty. I could have folded this in half. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when I folded it in half, I was measuring five inches. Thinking that added up to nine when you multiplied it by two, but that's not right. That's 10 inches, so okay. <laughs> We're perfectly fine. We had tons extra. All right, here we are. So let's set those aside. Okay, next up is the one that I think we can pair these two up with. It is the, I need four one and a half by two and a half inch rectangles. And you know what? I still have this edge here. I could just cut a one and a half inch strip and then cross cut the two and a half. So if I have a, an area like that on here, that would work out fabulously. And I think we might have it right here. Let's see. If this is, um, it needs to be what? Nine inch. Wait, two and a half. Oh, now, now it's the two and a half. So now we need, now we need the 10 inches, not the, if we do it that way. Oh, I still have 10 inches here. Oh, great. All right. Cool. We are going to do it with a one and a half inch strip. That is what we're going to do. So let's, uh, this is still kind of pressed. I'm going to just press this little area here. Trying to find the little areas on these, on these fabrics where I have, um, where I'm not wasting tons of fabric. Trying to find the areas where it's like the exact amount I need. So, you know, we have this nice edge on here because we just cut it, but I'm going to cut it all over again because now we're adding this piece to it. We got a weird little slit cut out of it there. All right. Just trim that up. Oh, you don't even need the rotating mat with the block lock. Oh, that is interesting. So like I said, I've seen, I know what the block lock rulers look like. I'm a little confused at how they actually function. <laughs> so um, I'll have to I'll just have to get one and see, I suppose. Okay, so now I'm gonna just cut a one and a half inch strip. Yes, one and a half. Then I'm gonna cross cut my two inches. And you know what? I think we need to pile more one and a half inch 
thing. So I might just, well, this strip is a little big. I'm going to cut it somewhere else. I was going to say I could just cut another strip and cross cut that, but we don't need that many. So this would be cutting too much fabric. This is a good case for the two ruler method because there's a lot of stuff here. If I would pick this up or try and move the fabric at all, these two pieces would not be lined up anymore. So by doing the two ruler method, I get to keep them, keep them all that edge perfect so I can layer cut them. One and a half, I gotta check again. Yep. Okay. So that is actually all we need of this fabric. So that's not much. Let's put that away. And we do actually need to cut a pile of swirls yet. But first let's, let's cross cut these. I think um, normally I would kind of fold these in half to cut, but since I have this shorter piece on top, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it just like this and trim. We need, I'm just gonna clean up this edge and then I'll rotate this mat again. I just have this tiny, small cutting mat. This is actually a cutting mat that unfolds to be a bigger cutting mat, but I kind of like leaving it folded like this because it fits on my um, it fits on my my table here just super well. Then sometimes when I need it bigger, I'll cross cut it. Okay, now I need two and a half inch bits. And I think we need four cuts worth. Three cuts, really, to get four pieces. But yeah, I could have saved some time and yeah, I'm layering two different fabrics here that were the same size and the same amount. I had that with the white and the swirls and I just didn't notice, so I had to cut those separately. But if I layered them like this, it would have gone a bit faster, I think. Okay. So I'm gonna just separate these so I can keep the pieces, um, the different colors separate. But we have our four two and a half by one and a half inch little rectangles. So these are the little side rectangles I'll show you again. We'll try and maybe lay this out a little bit. It'll be kind of weird because we don't have any half square triangles made yet, but it's always kind of fun to see all the pieces. So these are these are done. These are the pieces, these little rectangles that go along the side there. So those are ready. That's the only thing of that color. We have two more things to cut and then then that's it for cutting. All right, next up is four one and a half inch um, squares. So one and a half, four, five, six. We need a six inch area. Now this is a pretty jagged edge. Let's see. Let's see where six inches pops up here. But right here. So you know what? I think I'm going to trim that. I didn't really press this, but oh well. Get my one and a half down there. Get rid of some of these more weird edges. Actually, you know what? I'm going to hit that with the iron really quick. It's a little too weird for me. There we go. Now it's happier. All right, let's fold this. I'm going to fold it till right where it starts to get weird again. We'll trim that side off and we'll do two little cross cuts on this. Okay. 
That's a good sound. The little cross cutting. Um, oh, I'm working on Radio Silence, Catherine. It's on page 27. I'm going to just turn this this time. All right, one and a half. And I think we're just going to get through the cutting really tonight. Uh, but that's fine. That means tomorrow we can have fun sewing the entire time in a nice cleaned up area. Okay, four and a half, and another four, or one and a half, I mean. Four one and a half, so that's what I meant to say. Okay. One, two. Oh, look how pretty those swirls are in here. That's going to be nice. Three, four. Okay, and one more of the swirly fabric. What is it? Oh, just one. We need one two and a half inch square. Well, we can do that. Let's see. I think we're going to get it right from this corner here. And I think it needs to be pressed. Let's just toss it down here. Give it a little press quick. And you know, I think we may have just, this might be square enough. I'm going to just call that square. <laughs> Let's, it must be getting towards, uh, I'm getting towards the end of the cutting because I'm wanting to cut corners. <laughs> um, I'm literally cutting a corner. Uh, two and a half inches. Two and a half. Okay, so this is our pretty little center area, I believe. I think this is totally fine that I didn't square it up beforehand. This looks pretty square. So this time I'm just going to cut like, like that. Oh, Catherine, I am loving this block too. I, a lot of you guys have been making this one lately and just your contrasting fabrics just ugh, make it look so pretty. So I think that's why I chose this one tonight. We had to start a new block. Oh, I'm getting fuzzles on here. Hold on. I'm just going to try and trim this. And uh, this one just popped out at me tonight. And I wanted to stick with the piecing. We haven't done a lot of piecing lately, and I just want to... I'm, I'm getting backed up here in the Splendid Sampler of, of pieced blocks, so it's time to, it's time to rack some up. All right, you guys, that is it for cutting. I'm going to just kind of... Uh, show you guys all the cutting. Let's see if we can kind of recreate this. Uh, we won't because we won't have any of these pieces, but we can kind of just see what our colors are going to look like a little bit together, a little bit better than, you know, when I was just holding it all before. So, okay. All right. So we will have, this is going to be a little bit weird, but bear with me here. So these four will kind of go around here it looks like. I'm, I'm totally guessing right now based on just some experience and uh, um, just looking at the image here. Actually this, these go in the corner too so it's almost like we're making a square of the same thing but, but it, it won't be in a sec. Just kind of fun to see. So let's pretend we're making these um, flying geese units. I think we will be taking some of these. If I had to guess, I'm just gonna put a little fold in them. I'll have to press them all again probably. These will be in the corners. I'll just do like maybe two. Let's let's pin that guy there. So we can get a, a flavor of it. All right. There. There we go. That's a, our flying geese unit. I'm going to just kind of toss these other ones here. <laughs> They're kind of like there. They'll be in there somewhere. Let's just put one one to kind of represent represent our flying geese unit, but that's what that'll be like. So I think that's a pretty contrast, this tan color and this. 
that'll be pretty. Okay, and then we get these guys hanging out here. This is gonna be huge, and it's gonna shrink down as we as we stitch this together. Oh, that's kind of pretty. All right, these will go here. And we're gonna have a lot of white in the corners, it looks like. And all of these are gonna make our half square triangles. So this is definitely a pile of Frankensteining right now. So these larger squares are actually gonna become small half square triangles that will fit in here. So it'll be like, it'll be like this little square unit. That's gonna be the same way as how we're doing my little leaders. So see how I'm, I have a, a big triangle, kind of almost the same size as this, or it's a little bit bigger, but I'm, there's a diagonal line between the two corners and I'm sewing on either side of that diagonal a quarter inch and we'll, we'll cut down the diagonal and then we'll get two smaller squares that are half square triangles here. See, so we started with a, two big squares and we're gonna get two sets. There's one on this side and then there's one on this side of the half square triangles. So that's why we are starting out with larger blocks here and um, that will get all shrunken down into eight half square triangles. So there we go, magical. It's gonna, it's turning, it's gonna turn into that eventually here. So it's, it's always kind of fun. You can kind of get a sense of what the color palette will be like a little bit. Um, it's definitely a lot more subtle than than the bold dark navy here against that cream But you know our quilt uh, my quilt is a little bit more Subtle it's a blonde quilt. It's just a there's it's a lot. It's a low contrast quilt compared to compared to this block for sure But so we'll see how it turns out. I think we're gonna get a ton of sewing on this tomorrow I think we'll at least be able to finish all of our little units and we'll start sewing together the rows and you know what we might get farther than we think tomorrow too that's why you know maybe we'll see <laughs> i'd like to think that but yeah so here we go we get kind of a gesture of yeah bibbidi bobbidi boo it is gonna be done <laughs> so all right you guys i'm gonna flip you around and we're gonna call it an evening and we are just kind of ready to go uh it looks like we're gonna start with these half square triangles right here um, which is great because we can make them and then kind of fit them into our little grid here. So I'll just leave this right here like this and we can just squeeze them in and see what happens. Uh, that'll be kind of fun. We'll just constantly be filling in our little diagram. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm gonna flip you around now. All right, hello. Nice to see you again, everyone. I hope you all had a great weekend. Uh, we ended up going uh, just on a whim to my parents' house. So we, we drove down there like, five hours on Saturday and five hours back on Sunday, but it was a nice little, little break. I did not get to see Chad. He was not hanging around. So that was a bummer, Chad the kitty. Um, but I got to see my parents, <laughs> which are just as good as Chad. <laughs> So, all right, you guys, I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, and it will stay here on Facebook as well. And we'll get this sewn up tomorrow, or at least um, pretty far. Um, so we're going to start cranking out these, these uh, piece blocks. I'm excited. So thanks again, and I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Good night.